Hello guys, today we are in Australia and take a look at this offer at Monash University won by a subscriber from this YouTube channel about a year or two years ago. The date is actually quite there, 11th of October 2022 and the person started I believe in 2023. So this is a fully funded offer for a master's and covers tuition and the living stipend of 30,000 Australian dollars and I believe it also covers insurance. There's something here about overseas student insurance. So this is a full package. I'll be showing you scholarships at the same university in Australia, fully funded for both masters and PhD. So let's begin together. In case you're new, thanks for coming. But where have you been? There are several materials already on this channel on fully funded scholarships from around the world. So do not be a stranger. Look around. I'm sure you'll find something that catches your interest. And if you're a returning subscriber, returning viewer, I hope you get a scholarship sooner than later. So straight away, let's move to Monash to look for the goodies available. So this is Monash. And um, let's go straight to the English language requirement. I know this is one of like the first hurdle a number of people might face. So what do you do about this? Do you write the IELTS or TOEFL? Well, you do not need any of this if you're from one of these countries. You can see these countries are considered English speaking. And if you're from here, you wouldn't need any of these um, exams. I can see Nigeria there already, so that's good. A number of countries, like I can see Kenya, there's Ghana. So there are other ways as well to get an exemption. So look around. If your country is not on this list, look if there's any other way you can get an exemption. If you're sure you're proficient in the English language, you can always send them an email as well and um, explain to them that you are proficient in the language and you do not need to demonstrate any form of proficiency. So we've cleared that English language waiver available, no TOEFL, no IELTS, good news. So let's go to the scholarship page, page itself. You can see this is the RTP scholarship, the research training program scholarship and it's for both masters and PhD so if you're doing a master's it should be like two years you're doing a PhD it should be like four years you can see the worth of the scholarship is over 35,000 Australian dollars I think the offer we got in um, 2022 was like 30,000 yes you can see the 30,000 Australian dollars. So it means it has been increased to meet um, inflation, to meet the cost of living. So that's good. So when you scroll down, you see the full eligibility criteria, both Australian candidates or non-Australian candidates can apply, Co um, covers your living allowance, relocation allowance. That's interesting. I didn't even see that initially. So relocation allowance as well. And then you also get your tuition covered. So we can click on this and see what we get for relocation allowance so for relocation allowance you get either a thousand or two thousand and by the way these are different kinds of scholarships at the university as well apart from the rotp you have the monash graduate scholarship and um, wait a minute i think that's the one this guy got so he got rotp that covered his um, living stipend and he got monash international tuition scholarship which covers his tuition and um, health cover. So it's like a combination of two scholarships. So the first one covered is um, stipend. The second one covered health insurance and tuition. Great scholarship, wonderful. So let's go back there. So you can see the other ones. So check if you qualify for the other ones apart from RTP and see if you can apply for them as well. But for the sake of this video, we'll be looking at RTP specifically. And this one says 50,000. Probably we should look at this as well because that's large. That is very large. So let's go back to the RTP. So RTP, um, scholarship, relocation allowance, stipend, tuition. Let's go straight. So what about the deadlines? So if you take a look at this page, all the dates here are in 2023 and newsflash were already in 2024. So what do we do about this? It means the deadlines have elapsed. How do I apply? So that's not the full news. So just scroll down a little bit more. So look at the bottom of the screen. It says here that note the closing date for R1, that's round one, 2024 international that's international students has been extended 
to 4th April 2024 due to Easter. So it means the application system is actually still open for 2024. It's actually quite open at the moment. And the deadline will be in April. I think usually the deadline is in March, as you can see in 2023. The deadline was in March. Now, deadline is in um, April for 2024. So it means it is open now, but do not uh, you do not have to wait until um, 2020, um, April of this year, which is 2024. You can start applying now or looking for a supervisor now. Talk about that shortly. So you can start making your arrangements now and make sure you make all those arrangements before the 4th of um, the 4th of um, April 2024. So how do we apply? There is a link here. Where is that link I saw initially? So there's a link here on how to apply. We've already seen in the English language proficiency requirements. We shouldn't bother about this too much. So let's click on this link and let's, let's see where it takes us. So this is the link. It talks about the scholarships and what you should know about the scholarship. It's very competitive, by the way. Every scholarship is competitive. It's not for everybody, and that's just the that's just the truth. So you have to bring in your A game, your best. You have to put in your best effort. So for this scholarship, you have to um, submit first what they call an expression of interest form. An expression of interest form indicating how the department or the scholarship aligns with your background or your area of interest. How what the supervisors or what the professors are working on is. Um, is also what you're interested in. So there are different departments here. You choose the department that closely align with your area of interest and you get specific instructions from that department. For instance, the requirements for engineering, where yeah, my friend who got the scholarship last time got into, might be different from education. So pay attention to the particular requirement for your particular uh, department. In case I've not said it earlier, the scholarship is for research-based courses. So, masters by research, um, what do they call it? PhD is already by research. So, research-based courses, not um, course-based courses. And um, one more thing, a number of people might be concerned about agents. For a number of course-based courses it means you might need to you might need to um, contact an agent but for most research based courses agents are not required my friend who got the scholarship never used an agent he applied directly and got the scholarship so let's move forward so engineering let's see what engineering brings so this is engineering let's get it open so engineering says you should check your eligibility criteria for either the um, PhD or the master's by research. Also check your English language requirements, whether you meet it. And then saying that it's very competitive, attracts high caliber engineering students, you should have these documents. Again, this might not be the case for every other department, but just pay attention for engineering. They actually want this. Then find the supervisor. And I believe this will take you to the list of different supervisors and what they're doing. And what you're meant to do is to send the supervisor an email, introduce yourself, your area of um, research, your background, maybe um, your previous degree, your work experience. Um, why do you want to do a master's or why do you want to do a PhD? I'll be leaving a link to the in the description box of this video to teach you how to like send an email to a professor. So here they require to find a professor and then send the professor what they call uh, expression of interest so there's a form here called the expression of interest form and it's also written here what you should attach to the form like your academic qualifications if you have papers put it there your cv evidence of english language proficiency and every other thing you've gotten then after submitting this form and the supervisor is um, pleased with your with your package and your qualifications then he or she invites you to apply for admission so do not apply if you're not invited you have to go through the supervisor if the supervisor gives you a green light and then you proceed to um, apply and then it says here how you're going to apply and the deadlines and everything you need to know and then what next so remember this is just for engineering other departments might have slightly different um, procedures and requirements. So check for your own department, check for the procedure, check for the requirements. 
So let's do something else. So remember, we saw some other scholarships as well. Let's go to this. Um, yes, we saw other scholarships as well when we clicked on the location allowance. So there was this one, the Maxwell King PhD scholarship. So we'll just check out of curiosity whether we can also apply for it. So can international students apply for it? What department, what um, qualifications? So here it's saying 50,000, that's a lot. And it's just giving it to, they're just giving it to two people. So that's small, but why not? You can always go for it. Who is eligible? International students are also eligible. That's great. It also covers living um, allowance, covers research allowance, relocation allowance. So that's good. Covers one humanities and social sciences, covers one um, science and technology and the rest of it. That's the STEM field. The applications requirement is also written here. I think it's quite similar to what we saw earlier. So just go through it, you'll be fine. So this one is a little bit more competitive and just for two people. But I think the one we saw earlier, the ROTP, they have more people there. So let's go back to ROTP. ROTP has more spaces. They said varies, so they have not, they've not given the particular number of people. Certainly more than two, lots of people get the ROTP, so 10, 20, probably even more than that. So check and um, see what applies to you. So I might not be leaving a link to this scholarship for reasons best known to me. So how do you get to the scholarship page? So just click on, go to Google. Let me show you how I got here. So go to Google, type RTP Monash University, and then that's just the first, um, the result here. And I just clicked on it and then it came up. Voila, so you're there. So just go to Google, type RTP. And this RTP, by the way, the RTP scholarship is present in several other universities in Australia. So RTP, you can put Daikin, Melbourne, um, and the rest of them. I'll just put RTP Australia. And then you get a list of different universities offering the RTP scholarships. So this is a list of different universities. You can see that this is University of Adelaide, for instance, offering the RTP as well. So you can apply to multiple universities, of course, and see which one falls through. You might even be in that lucky position where you get multiple offers. So this is another one here. Check the dates, check the applications requirements check what the scholarship covers as well is it for just home students is it for international students these are the things you can do on your own so i hope this was useful guys fully funded masters and phd in australia at monash university as i said or as i used to say there are several other scholarships you can look at whether it's the uk whether it's canada us um, Sweden, Netherlands, France, and the rest of them. So look around and engage with other videos on this channel. If you've not sub subscribed already, please do so. There are many more videos coming your way. And I'll see you at the top sooner than later. Bye-bye for now. Cheers.